Hi everyone, this is Maths for Noobs. I decided to start a new SAT series, and so first I'll start off with some of the sample questions the College Board released on their website. And so um, I'm gonna, in this video, I'll cover questions one through five on their sample questions. And if you wanna see some of their other sample questions, or if you wanna see this on their actual website, I have posted a link below. So the first question says, the recommended daily calcium intake for a 20 year old is 1000 milligrams. One cup of milk contains 299 milligrams of calcium and one cup of juice contains 261 milligrams of calcium. Which of the following inequalities represents the possible number of cups of milk M and cups of juice J a 20 year old could drink in a day to meet or exceed the recommended daily calcium intake from these drinks alone? So we wanna know how much total calcium this 20 year old consumes in a day so i'm going to call that c capital c and so if she drinks m cups of milk how much calcium is that in total well if we know that there in one cup of milk contains 299 milligrams of calcium then if we know that if we multiply 299 times m so 299 per cup of milk but this is m times the amount of um the cup of milk she drinks, that's going to equal the total amount of calcium. So if we add that um, to the juice, which is 261 milligrams per cup of juice, this is going to give us a total um, amount of calcium she consumes in a day. Because remember, if we have units, I'll just write the units here. So if we have 299 here, and this is um, milligrams per cup of milk, so milligrams of calcium per cup of milk times and m is the amount of cups she drinks we can cross unit cups out and then we'll get milligrams so this value if we do 299 times m that's going to give us the total amount of uh, milligrams of calcium is in m cups of milk and same with this j but we're doing it with uh, juice instead here so what we want to know is how much milk and how much juice she could drink in a day to meet or exceed the recommended daily calcium intake. So the recommended daily calcium intake is 1,000. So if we meet it, if we want to meet the recommended uh, intake, then it's going to be 299M plus 261J is equal to 1,000. Because this would mean that the total calcium is equal to 1,000, which means she would have met the, the um, recommended daily amount but she could meet or exceed it. So this could this value right here could be greater than 1,000. So here we can change this to greater than or equal to sign. So we can either meet or exceed 1,000. So the answer here would be A, 299 uh, M plus 261 J is greater than or equal to 1,000. So I'm gonna write a check mark around A. So that is our answer. So the next question says, a research assistant randomly selected 75 undergraduate students from the list of all students enrolled in the psychology degree program at a large university. She asked each of the 75 students, how many minutes per day do you typically spend reading? The mean reading time in the sample was 89 minutes and the margin of error for this estimate was 4.28 minutes. Another research assistant intends to replicate the survey and will, at will attempt to get a smaller margin of error. Which of the following samples will most likely result in a small margin of error for the estimated mean time students in the psychology degree program read per day? So for this one, we don't really need to do much math. It's more like uh, data, data, like analyzing data and seeing whether you can do that. So I'm just going to go through their choices A through D one by one. So the first one says 40 randomly selected undergraduate psychology degree program students. So the difference between this study and then the original study is the number of people. So in this one she um, studies 40, while this one she studies 75. But sampling a smaller amount of people will not give you um, a closer estimate or will not give you a better answer. In fact, it will give you a larger margin of error because um, sampling smaller amount of smaller amounts of people doesn't give you as accurate data so for example let's say we only sampled two students in this whole um, psychology department uh, psychology degree program then what if these two students that I happen to randomly select were very like re read a lot of books a lot so they read a lot of books so let's say they both read for like three hours a day, then the average would be three. But then we didn't take into account all the other people because maybe some people didn't read at all or some people only read like once a week or something like that. 
So the more people we interview, the more the better and more accurate data we're going to get. So we don't want 40, but we want more people and we want more than 75 to get us to get a smaller margin of error. So we're going to eliminate A and B. So we're going to eliminate A and B because both of them say 40 when we want actually some a number that's greater than 75. So number C or letter C says 300 randomly selected undergraduate psychology degree program students. And that seems good because it's more than 75 and we're interviewing psychology degree program students. So let's check out D. So D says 300 randomly selected undergraduate students from all degree programs at the college. But this doesn't really make sense because why would we want to um, interview people from other degrees when the question is asking us uh, for psychology degree program? We only want, the question is only for psychology degree program students, so we don't want all degrees. We just want the psychology degree program students. So the answer is going to be C and not D. Okay, next question. So question three says, the first metacarpal bone is located in the wrist. The scatter plot below shows the relationship between the length of the first metacarpal bone and height for nine people. The line of best fit is also shown. Um, how many of the nine people have an actual height that differs by more than three centimeters from the height predicted by the line of best fit? So this line right here is the line of best fit. And we want to know how many people, or these dots represent um, individual people, how many have a height that differs by at least three centimeters from the actual line of best fit. And we're only looking at height, so we're only looking at the y-axis right here. We're not looking at the x-axis. So... Um, Looking at this person right here, this person differs by one, two, three, four, five from the line of best fit. This is five, five centimeters. So that's more than three. So we have one person already right here. So we have one person. I'm just going to do tally, one person. And this person's very close to the line, so it's probably not more than three centimeters. This person right here, it's a very big gap. So we're going to say that's another person who differs more than differs by more than three centimeters. And these three um, people don't differ as much, but this one differs one, two, three, four, like about four. So we're going to give that a tally. And this guy differs also one, two, three, four, five-ish. So it's going to be another, another guy who differs more than three. And this guy is only like one and a half. So we're not going to count him because it's, it has to be more than three centimeters. So the total was four people. So the answer is going to be B for this one. Okay. So question four. Um, I'm not going to read this part because we already read it. It's the same thing as the first question or question three. So I'm just going to read this part. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the slope of the line of best fit in the context of this problem? So the slope, slope shows us rise over run. And in this case, rise is going to be the change in height. And the run is going to be the change in length of first metacarpal bone. So change in uh, length, very sorry, change in length of bone. So I'm just going to actually calculate the slope, but you don't really have to. I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to find two points. Uh, I'm going to go with this point. And this point, and I'm going to find the rise of a run. So the rise is one, two, three, four. So it's four. So we have four over, and then the run is going to be 0.1 over 0.1 because this is at 0.1 intervals, so it's going to be 0.2. It's equal to 20. So the slope is 20. So if we relate it back to this um, height, change in height over change in LB equation I had before, it's change in height over change in length of the bone equals 20 over 1. This is what the slope shows us. So let's go through each question and match it with um, this answer choice. So A says the predicted height increase in centimeters for one centimeter increase in the first metacarpal bone. So it's saying the um, one centimeter increase in the first metacarpal bone, which is shown here. For every one centimeter increase in this in this bone, we have a 20 centimeter increase in height. This is what the slope is showing us. So the predicted height increase in centimeters, which is 20. So this is actually the correct answer because it's showing us the predicted height increase, 20 centimeter increase for every one centimeter increase for this LB. So that's the right answer. So we'll go through B, C, and D to see what each of them mean. 
So B says the predicted first metacarpal bone increase in centimeters for every centimeter increase in height. So this is saying the uh, first meta, uh, the for every centimeter increase in height. So for every centimeter increase in height. But that's like having one in the numerator instead of in the denominator, and that's not what the slope shows us. So this is actually wrong, and it's switching um, height and uh, length of bone around. So it's a close answer, but it's not exactly right, and you have to go back to the definition of slope as rise over run and not like rise, run over rise or something like that. So C says the predicted height in centimeters of a person with a first metacarpal bone length of zero centimeters. So when we say first metacarp metacarpal bone length of zero centimeters, we're saying when x is zero or the x-axis is zero. So this is basically showing us the y-intercept, but the y-intercept is not the slope, so this is the wrong answer. And the next one says the predicted first metacarpal bone length in centimeters for a person with um, a height of zero centimeters. So this is like saying when y or the height is zero. So that's basically the x-intercept, but the x-intercept is not the slope either. So this is going to be wrong as well. Okay, so moving on to question five. So question five says, based on the line of best fit, what is the predicted height for someone with a first metacarpal bone that has a length of 4.45 centimeters? So all we need to do is find 4.45 centimeters and then find the height. So 4.45 centimeters, if this is in 0 0.1 intervals, it's going to be 0 0.4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. 4 so 4.45 is around in the middle of this right here. So it intersects here. And then if we find the height here, we're going to draw a line here. So it's 170. So the answer is C, 170 centimeters. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other questions, please ask in the comment section below, and please remember to subscribe. And in the next few videos, I'll cover the rest of the problems and the sample problems that the College Board gave out. So thank you for watching.